Mario Diaz spent some time with Domingo Zapata. Yeah. Mario, good to see you. Good to see you. I had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, well, just say his name. Domingo Zapata. Just hearing it makes you wonder about the guy. It's a cool name. It also comes with an interesting story. When he came to the States, Zapata lived in an apartment in the Bronx and shared a bathroom with his neighbors. Now he lives in three cities, hangs out with celebs in all of them, and is enjoying a meteoric rise in the art world. I don't know about anything but oil, acrylic, and canvas. That's what I do. I think that an expression comes through a composition of things and not through a figure. I try to be the best at what I do, but it's only, you know, it's for history to say. Domingo Zapata paints with the confidence of a matador, but he runs the streets of the city as if he was a Pamplona bull. This is where I live. Yeah, they all like cameras in there. Yeah, they will. Don't worry. No. <laughs> he moves at the speed of Wi-Fi. So, Bowery Mission. Let's go there. Toasting Bellinis one second, Olé. opting for a new fix the next. I, I need to have my café and my cigarillo. And words like maravilloso or amazing are a constant in his vernacular. However, boredom is not. He even painted on this lampshade, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was a, another good night. When not savoring the snapshots of life. <laughs> That's a good one. Zapata routinely quotes the masters. Da Vinci used to say that. All of this while taking great pride in sharing his work. Yeah, well, I was going to show you what I did this morning. As well as the colorful stories behind them. And she said to me, only with one condition. That you're naked too. Is artist Domingo Zapata an enigma or a Quixotic legend in the making? Like Cervantes, the tale of Zapata has a birthplace in Spain. 38 years ago, on the island of Mallorca, his father painted cars, but it was his mother, a tailor, who was the first to identify his true potential. The niño tiene arte. She said you had art. Yes, so I was like, what is that? I was probably six, seven years old. The talent has taken him from Spain to the red carpets of New York City. And along the way, he has had some of the world's most beautiful women at his side. For Zapata, this is the intersection of art and intimacy. And it can create anything but strange bedfellows. If you feel comfortable, you can do what? You can get naked. <laughs> he sounds like a Lothario, but he's far from one. This is Zapata, the philosopher. Capturing his thoughts and vision on canvas is the challenge. Selling it, even greater. In his first major U.S. television interview, Zapata conveyed to me the impact of his first sale. You know, I still get, like, the chills when, when I think about that because, you know, I remember the first time I, I made money from one of my paintings, so I looked at my hands and I was like, wow, you know, what did that painting go for? I think $800, something like that. How much do your paintings go for now? Uh, probably an average of 70000 And even at those prices, Zapata says there is a wait list. One of his top sellers is Mona Lisa in disguise. She's become a bullfighter here. Is that cheating Da Vinci? No. Normally, a masterpiece takes weeks to complete. But for Zapata, his pieces are never mastered. Sometimes I go to a house of a collector three years later, and I'm like, wait a minute, can I, do you mind? <laughs> And I do a little bit of a retouch. <laughs> as enthusiastic as Zapata was to showcase his work, he was equally excited to take me to the Bowery Mission. If we're going to the kitchen. It is there where he shared with me the story of garlic pizza. The pizzeria is owned by a friend who wanted some paintings. One problem, he lacked money. So Zapata, who barters as well as he paints, had an idea. I talked to this guy. And I'm like, how would you like $100,000 in free pizza? And he started to cry. So you took $100,000? Yeah. And you turned it into pizzas? Yeah, we created the pizza night. You know, which I think is, is very important because, you know, every family or every father, you know, uh, no matter the circumstances, should be able to provide for their family. Art for pizza. Unconventional yet noble. He views it as an honor helping others who in turn help him by knowing that his work is appreciated. In the end, it's La Dolce Vida, a sweet life, and Zapata wants nothing more. I honestly wake up in the morning and, and I look at myself like my dad painted cars and I paint canvases. And that's what it is. And no matter what 
happens around me. That's what I want to do with my life. An interesting painter, no doubt. Zapata, who has been on location in Venice for the last few weeks, told me during our interview that he is willing to barter for the Bowery once again, even raising the ante from $100,000 all the way up to $1 million in paintings. What a great story. It was, it was really fascinating following him around. And you saw his place. He lives inside of the Bowery Hotel. A great life. But he right? just moved yep. out, and he bartered for that location. But he doesn't remember, he doesn't forget his roots and he gives back. Nah, I, before we leave, yeah. I gotta have you say it one time. Domingo Zapata. Domingo Zapata. There you go. Ooh.